One, two, three, go. <laughs> Multicasting at a time. What is your name? Are you happy today? Okay. I'm the leader of Project Tao. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that everyone took away something from this trip. Uh, and I'm very satisfied that uh, we managed to help the villagers a lot. We spent a lot of time in the villagers this um, trip. We, I think, spent three times the amount of money on medications that we did compared to previous trips. Um, a lot of the villagers came back to thank the doctors, you could see them very relieved. There was this one man who came back. Uh, he came with a back injury and then came back in the end of the day when we were closing our mobile clinic just to thank us because his back felt a lot better. So every little thing we do during this trip really means a lot to the villagers. Even if it means just helping them uh, be more comfortable for a day, for a week or for a month. Because we can only do so much, we only carry acute medications, maybe a bit more chronic medications this year compared to previous years, but I mean, anything that helps the quality of life still means a lot to them. One of the most memorable things this trip was when we went back to SEAL school, not just SEAL school, I mean Taowong. People remember us, people recognize us, and you go as the kids going up to you, after one year they remember your name, which to me is insane because I don't think I can remember many of the Khmer names and they have memorizing our names, they come up to us, they thank us. It shows how much they really appreciate us. Even though we do such little things for them, we only hear about a short period of time, two weeks. Even for SEAL school, we go there once or twice every year. People remember us, they can write our names, they bought things for us, and they are so thankful for that short period of time we spend there. So it really means a lot that we can make a difference in these people's lives. Hello, my name is Keegan, one of the co-leaders of uh, Project Daom and Botrong. Um, what I wanted to achieve on this trip was that I was hoping you guys could not only learn about the medical knowledge that all the seniors or anyone else on this trip can provide, but also about the lives of the people here, the culture and how people live um, their daily lives, just cycling in and out, working on the farms and all that. So, yeah, I really do hope that you can take something away from this trip, having learned something uh, about this. Um, in terms of contributing back to the society, I hope that you um, kind of form meaningful relationships with the people here through your interactions, um, be it through your medical screening, mobile clinic, or just education. So that's what I hope that um, you guys can take from this. Okay. Alright. How was it? Really, really good. 
How did this trip challenge you? Um, I think this trip really pushed me out of my comfort zone. Um, as even when I'm in Singapore, I'm usually in my aircon room. So coming on this trip and going to the villages, um, helping the villages. Um, through health screenings and mobile clinics was really fulfilling and meaningful but also very busy and very hot um, it was physically quite exhausting so but I had a lot of fun with everyone on this trip um, The challenge for me in this trip was to understand what was going on at every point of time because mobile clinic and children education were pretty hectic so being like the first time i mean this is my first time being you know overseas cip so it was a bit hard for me to get a grasp of like what is going on in every single moment so that was a bit challenging and having to adapt to any difficulties that arise during the trip was also one of the challenges and then I'm the physiotherapist for this group and then I'm also in the publicity comm so I take a lot of photos and for physio for the, as a physiotherapist I prescribe like exercises to the villagers I will definitely be more grateful for all, everything that I have yeah. now back in Singapore I have so much more than these villagers and they are so thankful for what they have or whatever little things they have and then sometimes I take these things for granted such as like proper sanitation and having uh, a roof over my head and eating three meals a day but these people, they all they eat is like rice and vegetables and so like they develop a lot of diseases and then they don't shower every day and then daily small things to them are like Quite a struggle, and then also. Um, I'm Cormac, I'm a fifth year medical student in UCD, and I'm doing adult education. Main takeaway is probably just that, like, there's so much we can do for the people here, and like, as everyone was saying, not enough resources, but it's you can do a lot of small things for people that make a huge difference. Um, and even just being there for people and then knowing that you're going to come back um, that gives them a lot of comfort. So. Obviously the leaders, uh, Dominic and Keegan, the doctors, Dr. Chong, Dr. Yu and Dr. Gong, because without them we couldn't have made as much impact. Um, all the drivers that drove us around, helped us translate. Uh, translators, of course, um, the children were so, and the adults were so welcoming and very friendly with us and just made the whole trip a lot more fun.
Um, I'm Chloe, this is my third year on Project Cal, and this year I was in charge of clinical skills. Sue inviting us to his doctor's birthday party, and that was really fun because we got to party with local Cambodian people, playing their music and all. It was, it was quite good, it was an interesting experience. And they're so welcoming as well, they just opened up their arms. Invited us to their home, partying with their neighbors and their family and their friends. It's great. Um, I think definitely that was one of the most memorable experiences for me. But um, another thing was when we were closing up um, the mobile clinic on the last day, we were all ready to go, and then one of the ladies came back and then she was like, Oh, um, I had this medication and it really helped. Can I get something? Can I get some more for my daughter? And then she took it out and it was primrose oil. So it shows you like how much just like providing care and any form of help can provide like the placebo effect and comfort in that sense. So yeah, that was interesting. I believe we might have made a difference collectively as a project, but on an individual level, I feel like I'm still a long way from that. Hopefully they know that we're there to care for them. I keep repeating myself yeah. again and again, but same thing, yeah. I don't think we would do much uh, much of a change in terms of their health care or their standard of living or anything. But at least hopefully we kind of touch that on this a little bit. Chia, Ke'an, <laughs> and I run the pharmacy in Project Tamil. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Nicole. Yeah, I am in charge of female hygiene. <laughs> yeah. So, what are your main takeaways from this trip? Uh, it was really, it was really fun actually to run the pharmacy. So, if anyone's planning on running a pharmacy next year, you know you can look for me. Just kidding, just kidding. But anyway, um, I think. It was just a really good experience in in, in, in general, like overall, um, you know, getting to like go to the villages and seeing um, the living conditions and the quality of life that they that they, they go through every single day. And um, it's really nice to be able to um, apply whatever we kind of learned in med school or like learn new things along the way and uh, you know help those that are in need. Main takeaway. Yeah, main takeaway. Um, my heart got a bit bigger. <laughs> no, but like, I, yeah, I loved it so, so, so much. And I was really grateful to be able to do something. Yeah, to not feel so helpless. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> okay. When we first visited um, the house, we were told that this guy had just been discharged from the hospital just a few days ago but he had really bad fever and abdominal pain mm -hmm. and um, we couldn't figure out why until we saw the x-rays that he had gotten from the hospital and we saw that he had really really massive kidney stones but um, the surgeons instead of removing the kidney stones they decided to put in a stand, yeah, a stand to block the ureter which obviously wasn't what was needed for the patient because the kidney stones were basically causing infection in the kidney and that led to his fever and just uh, <coughs> putting him in a lot of pain basically so that was quite unfortunate to see because even though he had sought out medical care it wasn't, um, it wasn't dealt with appropriately and uh, he wasted a lot of his own, his family's hard-earned money um, on this medical care that didn't actually help him. Yeah. Yeah. So that was quite that was quite hard to watch. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's just the more you think about it, you get more pissed off. Because like if he was in Singapore, he would be completely fine. Like he would have gotten his treatment. He would be healthy. He would have lived a. I mean, he would be living a long life. Yeah. yeah. And it sucks that life is like that. Yeah. yeah. You know, to put things into perspective, like they spent one thousand dollars, and then to do, nothing. to do yeah to do nothing, and then one year they earn about four hundred on a good year. Yeah. yeah. So they spend like. And also months. the actual the surgery that he actually needed to remove the kidney stones actually only cost six hundred yeah. six hundred USD. So he wasted so much money on something that he didn't need mm -hmm. when he could actually have gotten what he needed for a lower price. This doesn't make sense.
should totally yeah. record this. Well, I am, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yay. Everyone's role in the healthcare industry is important to make sure that the patient gets out of the care. Um, so the challenge I found was um, when handling the pharmacy because uh, there were so many different drugs and I wasn't very familiar with many of the drug names. So um, getting used to the drugs and knowing where they were placed proved to be of a challenge and um, <coughs> it showed that um, during the pharmacy we tried out different methods and it really showed that teamwork uh, really helps speed up things. Um, Hi, my name is Sean. I'm German Logistics IC for Project Down Hi, my name is Cassandra and I'm in charge of child ed. Hi, my name is Kaini. I was in charge of dental education. The ways would be learning how to work as a team, um, providing the best of our abilities to those that are less fortunate, and trying to make a difference. For me, the main takeaways of this trip would be, just as John said, um, cooperation between teammates and actually tolerance for each other. And I feel like being able to do that as a team really made an impact on me. For me, the main takeaway is realizing that um, we're providing acute care and it may not seem very significant, but actually it means a lot to them. So even though we're coming here for two weeks and it feels like we're putting in so much for like so little, but it's actually very important. For me, I think the most memorable moment would be returning back to the village and then the kids running up to you, remembering you. It's like some form of attachment, in terms of connection. Mobile clinic, quite fine. The, mess, the most memorable moment for me would be actually doing physical examination for the first time because I'm still a first year student and I learned a lot from the experience and we actually got to interact with the patients and get to know more about their lives, not only their conditions. For me, the most memorable moment was 
there was this girl that I was quite attached to in Taong and I was never really a children kind of person but like this girl like really warmed up to me and I didn't think I would see her again because I thought I might be going to work on for children education instead but I went to Taong and I was there unloading things and she ran up to me and gave me a hug and she literally dragged me over to wherever she wanted and it was really hard on me like wow she still like shows so much affection My name is Zhang Yu. I'm one of the year four medical students going to year five. My role was to do um, clinical teaching for the juniors. Um, my name is Annie. I am a finished third year of medicine going into my fourth year, and my role on this trip was uh, in adult education. And what experience challenged you guys, and why? I want yeah, I was one of the main highlight. I think for me it was the seeing the little girl with HIV. So she look she she is twelve but she looks like she's like eight or nine and she was uh, really skinny, uh, skin to bones and uh her BMI was probably around like thirteen if I have to say or twelve. So seeing and uh, she came in with uh, di uh, diarrhea, which we wouldn't know whether it would be opportunistic infections or not. But uh, she said she's said to be on the cryotherapy, so hopefully uh, HIV is under control. But um, just to be able to see um, diseases in this kind of situations, whereby in a first world country it can easily be controlled, and where most people with HIV live uh, as long a life as a normal. Uh, person without HIV, uh, it really puts into perspective the level of health care that is available in places like this. Um, I suppose one particular um, experience that stands out in my mind would be um, I was taking um, a history and talking to this gentleman who was in his 70s um, and he had very high blood sugar. Um, 18 or 19 and um, he knew he was diabetic um, but um, we were just chatting um, away about his diabetes and um, I, I just got to learn how he doesn't have his own monitor um, he has to travel 20 kilometers to test his blood and um, so he just doesn't end up testing it for months um, he doesn't have the right medication because it's too expensive for him um, and yeah, I guess he just kind of has to live um, every day with like his blood sugar is that high and um, feels very sick as a result of it. Um, but because I have type 1 diabetes myself, that really just hit home. Um, just the stark contrast between like what I have available for myself at home and kind of my health care is just so, so completely different from, from what he um, has here. So. Yeah, that was a real kind of, it really hit home um, that, that particular day, yeah. And it's the same for like nearly all of the patients out here. So. Hello, my name is Zhu Xuan and on this trip I'm the treasurer so I take care of all the money and the stuff. Before I came I was just wondering like how much I could actually help these villagers given like our limited resources and all that. villagers actually they have quite not that major problems like back a like muscular skeleton problems due to like their work as farmers and 
so like I guess the only thing that we can do for them would be a lot of pain really. Yeah. And because they, they still need to work and as, as long as they work the pain is gonna continue. But yeah, then there are a few cases of like hypertension and then cuts and stuff that just clean up the wounds and all. Yeah. But I guess I what I really like about this trip is the kids. They're so very, very cute. I remember like in Tao, there was this little girl who went around hugging people and giving kisses. And also this little boy that just come up to you and hug you and say thank you in English. It's so cute. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's quite a fulfilling trip to see like the villagers. And knowing that you can, well, even if the help is not very much, do you can help them within your, your the means that you have. So I'm Sean, I'm one of the junior doctors that came along for this trip. Uh, it's my second time back in Tao. I came back, came as a medical student uh, last year and uh, I thought that experience was very meaningful, which is why I decided to come back as a doctor this year. Mm -hmm. so I think we all did, uh, be it in a big way or a small way. I think regardless of whether you're involved in mobile clinic or whether you're involved in uh, child education, women's education, I think whatever you've done here has definitely made a big impact on the lives of the people of Tao and Port Rong and other villages. Um, someone once told me that um, the way we change the world is through one small act of random kindness at a time. Uh, some of you might feel that you didn't make a big difference because you didn't, do, didn't like make direct medical decisions, things like that. But don't be disheartened because um, I'm sure that the people of the villages are very appreciative of what you've done for them. Practicing medicine in a first world country versus practicing medicine in a third world country is really very different. Uh, firstly, uh, you don't have as much resources. Uh, back in Singapore, you can really prescribe five different kinds of painkillers for a single patient. Whereas over here, I, I get scolded even from prescribing two due to the, the fact that we lack so many uh, medications. Secondly, is the time that I, have to, I can spend with each individual patient is very limited. Uh, because there's such a huge number of patients that we have to reach out to and just so little time. So I think uh, these two aspects of the trip really challenged me in terms of uh, the way I provide care for my patients here versus the way I provide care for patients in Singapore.